Hello, peeps. Get it? Welcome or welcome back to a Made by Amanda Mal. I'm Amanda and I make stuff. For those of you who don't know me, I am a crochet artist. I mostly make amigurumi plushie type items that I sell at market events and online. I do have a market coming up this weekend and this is going to be a market prep video because I have a lot to do before then. So hopefully we can knock some things out. I was thinking I will be showing you all of the new patterns that I'm making for this market. I'm really excited because I started making all of my Easter stuff. This will actually be the only market I have until Easter and Easter is like about a month out. So hopefully it does well at the market. I was like, this is the only market I have until Easter. So I got to have it with me. So we'll see how all those items do. And they're just really cute items in general. So hope, I think they'll sell anyway, but we'll see. Um, I have a bunch of new stuff I've been making that I'm really excited about. So I'll show you all those patterns first. And then I was thinking we could figure out my display. I have a big 10 by 10 setup at this market. It's been a minute since I had a 10 by 10 setup. So I'm very excited for that. And um, I love figuring that part out. So we'll do that together. And then I also have to do some price tagging. And also I did get some requests on my last market prep video to show you guys how I do all of my square inventory tracking um, in my square app. So I'm going to try to show you that as well. And then next week I will have a market breakdown video for you guys where I show you everything I end up bringing to the market, how much I charge for all those items and how I do at the market, what my best sellers were, what didn't sell. I have no idea how this market will go. So we'll talk about that in that video. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. And I'm really excited to show you all my new stuff. So I'm just gonna jump into that. Uh, all these patterns shown in this video Sorry, there was a bug. All of the patterns shown in this video will be linked in a Google Sheet down below in the description. So check that out if you'd like to. And let's jump into it. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna show you, um, this is not a new pattern that I've been using, but these are new yarns that I've been using for my turtles. This is some cute spring yarn for some spring turtles. I think these are adorable. And I never used to love making turtles, honestly, but I think it was just because I didn't have inspiring yarn. Now that I have a really cute, like yarn, like new yarn patterns and stuff, I'm obsessed with making turtles. I have more in this little spring collection and I'm gonna show you all them because I think they are really cute. I have this pink one with this like chenille homes. Uh, this is Sweet Snuggles light color, actually. Sweet Snuggles um, light striped color. And I made this specific color pattern before and this did well for me at my market. So I made another one. Um, I also made this blue guy. Look how cute he is. I love him. And I also made this one, which might be my favorite. This little like carnival. These are all Sweet Snuggles lights patterned colors um, that can be found at Michael's. And the color combos are just chef's kiss and i love making turtles now i think these will well i hope these will do well and if not that's okay because they're cute and i love them so whatever i'm also bringing a couple just plain colored turtles as well so i have a lot of big turtles for well i consider these big because i also have like a mini turtle pattern that i use and i'm not bringing any mini turtles i'm just bringing these ones so hopefully they do okay and i have a bunch of them so We'll see. I'll let you know in the next video, I guess. Next, like I already showed you a little preview of, are these peeps? How cute are these? I think these are the cutest little Easter item to like put in an Easter basket or something. And this specifically is a free Instagram pattern. It will be linked in the patterns below. Um, I love these. I think they are adorable. And I think that they will be a good Easter item. And I also made a bigger peep with like a bigger peep pattern. Um, I think I bought this pattern on Etsy and I like this peep. All right, just as a comparison, this is like the bigger peep pattern and this is the smaller peep from the free Instagram pattern. 
I don't know I like like the way that this one turned out better but this pattern definitely took me a while it was like a bigger pattern and I just don't know how well they're gonna sell um, and this is gonna have to be a higher price point because it took me a lot longer and it took me a lot of yarn and I don't know how willing people are gonna be to spend on like these bigger peeps so I like making these little ones they work up pretty fast and I just think that they're gonna sell better because they're gonna be at a cheaper price point so I only made one big one and then I have a couple of these little ones in a bunch of different colors so I'm excited to see how they do next this will also be the only market I have until St. Patrick's Day so I needed some sort of St. Patrick's Day item and when I was looking for patterns on Etsy I just didn't see any that were like quick that I like liked really so I made my own. I made these little leprechaun patterns. This is Lucky and Lucy the Leprechaun. This is a no sew pattern that I made. It's a two in one pattern. So both of these will be included in the pattern. I'm really excited about this pattern release. These work up pretty quick and they are just so cute. I will have this linked in the patterns below as well. Let me know if you check it out and what you think of it. But look at these little guys. I'm so excited about them. Next, I made these sheep. Oh my gosh, look at this sheep. I love her. I think she is so adorable. Um, this pattern involved a little bit of sewing. Um, I did have to sew on her head and her legs and her ears, but it wasn't too bad. And if you're good at bobble stitches, if you like a bobble stitch, this whole pattern is basically bobble stitches. So besides like the fact that they take a little bit of time, like it works up like decently fast. And I just think it's so cute. I just love her. So I will have her linked in the patterns below as well. Next, I obviously have bunnies. Look at these little buns. This, I'm just gonna show you all of them. I have a couple and I made them all with the same pattern um this is a q crochets baby bunnies with hats pattern um she's one of my favorite pattern designers because she has like super great no sew patterns this is low sew it's not no sew but the body is like no sew and then i think the only thing i sewed on were like the ears really i guess and then the hat i like sewed this onto her little strawberry hat but i have other ones that I didn't have a strawberry hat. Some, you don't even have to make it with hats. So it's super cute. Um, I love this one and I'm gonna show you the rest of them that I made because they're all freaking adorable. I also have this one. I made her with like a different, she has like uh, three different like ear types in the pattern, which is great, a great selection. The hats are removable, but I might actually sew them on because I don't know like why would you want to like take it off really i don't want people like messing her up so i might just end up sewing on the hat we'll see but this is my yellow one with this little floral hat and these little foley ears and then i made this pink girl look at her she's so cute see the hat's kind of like this is the hat not sewed on and it just doesn't whatever um look at her this is her with her little foldy ears as well and her cute hat so adorable and then last but not least i made this little gray bun with these little two colored ears and i love these ears i love the way that they came out and i love the way that she came out i made her with blanket yarn the rest were made with um chenille home slim or sweet snuggles light i think they were sweet snuggles lights all of them but um this one was blanket yarn so she came out a little bigger and i just think she's so cute with her little floppy ears so definitely check out that pattern and i think my last like new pattern that i will be bringing to this market are you ready look at this flamingo look at her just look at her sorry i didn't mean to yell at you but I am just obsessed with her. This is a no sew pattern um, from Crochet Grove and I'm obsessed with it. It honestly like worked up pretty fast and I just think that she is the cutest thing. Like 
I don't know if this is necessarily an Easter item, but this pattern was like recently released and I just could not wait to make it. I just simply could not wait. So here she is and I can't wait to bring her and see how well she does. I'm honestly a little sad to sell her, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I always do this. Like I said, I always get too emotionally attached and then it kind of hurts me to sell them, but I can always make more. Stop. Stop making me emotionally attached to you. So yeah, that was it for the newer patterns that I'm bringing. Um, like I said, I'll have all everything I bring in my next market breakdown video. And now I think I'm gonna move on to setting up my display. So come join me for that. Okay, hello everyone, I am back. I literally bought this mic for this specific occasion so that I can do this setup and you guys could still hear me while I'm figuring all this out over here. So I hope it is working and I hope you can hear me. Um, this is what our area is looking like. Like I said, it is a 10 by 10 setup at this market this weekend. So I have two, um, two four feet, four foot tables and then this little like two foot table over here that I kind of put off to the side. I think at my bigger events, I will end up adding more bigger tables, but, uh, this isn't like a huge, huge event. So I think that this is going to be fine for the setup and literally you are not going to believe what just came like five minutes ago. I think it was like the universe really excited for me to show you this item. So they were like, here, we're going to send it to you five minutes before you film this video. So look at it guys. I got a new table banner. A new table banner this is like a, a runner banner so kind of like have it like this i don't think i'll be able to see it when i like put it like this just lay it over the table and it's gonna hang nice and cute off of my table like this and you can't really see it what oh the bin's in the way but you get the idea, okay? This was necessary. I have like my old banner and I used to hang it on the front of my table and it is always a struggle for me. I literally duct tape it to the table. Um, I had not found a better method and I was duct taping it every time, totally destroying the sign. It was like so inconvenient. And I always see people with these cute little table, like runner banner things. And I'm like, that is so easy and it looks so nice. I wish I had one of those. So I ordered one on Amazon. I made this design on Canva and then I like uploaded it to um, this Amazon banner thing. I will link it down in the description. It wasn't too bad. I think this is like a, I forget, a little bigger than like a two foot maybe a three foot, I think, maybe, I think it's three feet, um, width wise. And it was like 30 bucks, which isn't bad at all. This is going to be what I bring to every market from now on. So I think it was definitely worth the money, especially with like the convenience of it. And I still have to iron it. So it's looking very wrinkly right now, but I literally love the way it came out. So yeah, I'll have that linked in the the description for you guys if you're interested in getting a cool banner but let's start our display okay we'll keep our banner there for to keep us in good spirits and we're gonna start arranging our display items i'm excited oh i didn't even bring all my stuff over here i'll get those later okay all right so first let's set up big set of items. As you know, I did recently just get this tiered thing that I used for my last market. I bought this from um, Hobby Lobby for like 20 bucks. And this is what I'm gonna put all my like birds on. I'm gonna put it on this little table over here. Maybe, I don't know, we will see. As you know, you really gotta trust the process with this, okay? Oh, look at my cute Easter. Can you really see it? That's like a cute little Easter tablecloth. 
I don't know if it's too busy or not, but it's cute. I like it. I have a lot of space on these tables. I think last time I did a 10 by 10 setup, I was selling a lot of accessories. Um, I was selling like crochet earrings and stuff like that. And compared to the plushies, they just didn't do as great. So I don't think I will be, like I said, maybe at like my really big events, but I feel like an event like this, I don't think that I'm gonna be bringing like accessories like that anymore. Um, they just don't do as well and they take up a lot of my table space. And it takes forever to hang up all the little earrings and stuff and they're blowing around in the wind the whole time. It's like a whole thing. So they're not gonna be at this market. This is all stuffed up, this little box. It sucks. Okay, so this is like our bare bones stuff. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if that table is gonna work right there, that little table, because it's kind of like blocking this like corner section. And with the two four by fours, it is only like an eight foot area. So I might just have to end up putting this table like to the side. is just 10 feet lengthwise. Can you still see it over there? Yeah, you can see it. Okay, so it does throw off my banner placement. And now I don't know how I should, where my center should be. I'm not sure. I want the Easter stuff in the middle. But now I don't know where the middle is, kind of, if I add that. And then I have to shift things. I'm just going to start adding some stuff and seeing how things go. Look how cute. I'm going to display these in this little Easter basket for sure. That's super cute. Um, yeah, maybe this is just going to be the Easter side over here. This other little Easter basket I'm going to use, and I'm going to put my sheet in here. Just going to kind of put the Easter stuff together, and then I'll figure out where that's going after. I'm going to keep my Pokeballs in this little, little um, basket. I don't know where they're going to end up yet. I'm thinking leggy frogs will also go on this little stand area. That'd be cute. I don't know what to put on the top though. I'm not sure what to put up there. Hmm. I usually do my octos, but this is going to be all $12 stuff now, and I'm going to keep my octos at $10, so... And they haven't been selling that great for me, so I kind of want to put them somewhere more center-ish. Can you guys see what's happening? Kind of. Sorry the lighting isn't great. some of these little like ducks here i'm gonna put some of them on i just put hi neat come here you want to be in the video i'm gonna put some of these little ducks on my bird display area but these are also really cute easter items so i think i'm also gonna put some in the easter vicinity i'm thinking i might actually put my triceratops this time. A little bit up here. I think 
there's one more somewhere. All right, that's what we got on the tier stands. I have my triceratops on the top, and then, why are you yelling? Come here. You guys wanna meet my son? Can't forget our nuggets. These will have little parchment paper in there. Once I actually set this up in this little thing. How cute. I don't know where I'm putting these up. Not sure. I think my octos might just go in this little bin somewhere. I'm not sure where yet, but they might I made a new dragon, guys, with this like cute blue multi sweet snuggles yarn. If you watched my last market prep video, you will know that I was really struggling to part with my other baby dragon that I made and I didn't. I didn't end up selling him. He's staying. This is the one I'm keeping. This was the first one that I made and I just love him. I'm too emotionally attached to him to sell him. So I made a new one with the Sweet Snuggles multi blue yarn and he will be on the table. He will be getting sold hopefully. Oh, I found my other triceratops. I don't know though. I think I could also use a bunny up there. That's cute. And the unicorn girly, she might go up here too. I don't know, she kind of just lost up there. She's a little. You can move her down here. These other bunnies, what are we gonna do with all those? The thing about this like crate is that it's really like there's a lot of depth in it, it goes really far like back. So when I put things in there, I feel like they kind of get a little bit lost, and I definitely don't want that to happen. So I'm not sure. Let me just sew these hats on. Guys, I'm having an episode because I don't think that this mic is working. I do not even think it was it is working, so I'm not sure if you heard anything that I was saying. I don't really know how to work these. I turned it on, the green light's on. Hello? Well, sorry if you couldn't hear what I was saying. I'll just start talking louder. Okay, so like I was saying, a lot of depth in there, so we're gonna have to figure out how to make the bun stand out. Maybe I'll put Sheepy Girl in there. It kind of looks cute in there. So where should I put the bunnies? What do you think? Eye level up here for the bunnies or down here for the bunnies? I think maybe some up here. Honestly, I might put them all up here. This is just too good. But then kids can't grab them up here. And if you heard my whole dilemma in the last video about how I want the kid to grab stuff, you would know that that's a problem for me. Oh, but they do look so cute up here. All right, they're staying. I'll put the gray one down here. I'm not sure what's gonna go in this little, that little area back there. Maybe unicorn girly? Yeah, but then you can't see what she is back there. I don't know. I don't want to like put anything back there, honestly. But I can't just leave that area not full. It's fine. Might be able to see her. She looks good in there. That's cute. Is 
just even working. Okay, spring turtles are gonna go in the spring turtle area. Oh, I wanted to put some of these duckies over here. Should we put them in here with the sheep? No, I want the sheep to have her own moment. This is cute guys. This is cute. I'm gonna do a close-up showing after I'm done configuring this all. How are we looking so far? You see it over there? Not not this area. Just this this little spot. It's looking good. Not sure about this area. I don't know where to put this flamingo girly. Actually. I might just feature her front and center here. She doesn't stand up great because her head's really heavy. I could just put her sideways like that. I feel like she looks better like that. And then watch, she's like eating my bunny butt. I don't like that. No, she needs to be like angled this way. Okay, she's just chilling there for a sec. We'll fix her later. Octopus might need to go center stage, actually. Because we need possums over here. Possums are going over here. Our other turtles are going here. Mickey balls are over here. Dragon King is doing very festive. I should put my leprechaun guards up here. Does anyone want to see them up there? This is looking good, guys. This is looking good. You see this area? Okay, this is the final test. Now we need to do the dad block like this. I love it. Okay, here is the close up tour. Obviously I will have tablecloths on these tables when I get to the event. So sorry if they're looking rough right now. These are our possums. We have our little leprechaun guys, our bees, our pookie balls, little baby dragon boy, our stand of triceratops, mushrooms and leggy frogs. We have the turtle assembly line, which goes into our spring turtles over there. I have the octos in the octo bin. I have this little flamingo girly that I need to figure out how to get to stand up. Um, I have our buns up here. Uh, we got little lamb sheepy girl and another bunny. Our duckies. We have the peep collection over here. This little spot of various other things, our cows and unicorns and stuff. We got our axolotls my nuggets and little birds stand over here and that's pretty much it what do you guys think let's look at it again i like it i think it looks great um yeah okay i took off the mic forget that thing now i'm going to work on some price tagging and little story for you guys so in my last market prep video i went on a rant about how i like to use these for my price tagging i use these like little tags and then instead of threading the little string part through i use pins to attach it and my theory behind that was it saves time and i don't want people pulling on the tag to try and rip it off and multiple people in the comments replied about how when they were using pins, 
they they had multiple stories about kids who injured themselves trying to get the pins off like injured themselves with the pins i think one said that a kid tried to eat it tried to eat the pin so this is why i love the crochet community because i think that's really valuable information now i'm gonna be paranoid about kids trying to eat the pins I think I am going to just try to use these up until they run out, which shouldn't be too long, honestly. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'll wait until they run out, but I'm going to try and use a little bit more of them. And then someone mentioned that they use like a tagging gun and actually like a tagging gun where you kind of put like the tags on clothes and stuff. Um, I think that would be cool to use. I've also been thinking about getting like my own branded tags made. So I think that that would be a good transition. I don't know if I'm ready to do that just yet. Um, but the tagging guns aren't that expensive on Amazon. So that might be something I am considering soon because I did not like those stories about the pins. I didn't like that, but I'm just going to use them for now because it's what I have and I'm going to tag some stuff. I definitely do not tag like every item. I only tag my kind of one-off items, like bigger items, items I know will be like various prices, like the same thing, but they might be like various prices. For example, my turtles are different prices. Um, my like regular turtles are a certain price and then my strawberry turtles or my sunflower turtles they are like higher prices so I prefer to just individually tag all those items because it's just easier than having a million sorry a million little like pricing signs out I just don't love littering my table not littering but it's just like there's only so much room on the table and I would prefer to save that table space for my plushies as opposed to a ton of pricing signs. I just don't like that vibe. I don't know. I do still have pricing signs for like all my smaller items. That's what I use. So yeah, I only tag very few things. I honestly don't even know if I could really make the excuse that the pins like save me a lot of time because it takes me a little bit to like redo the pin. <laughs> you know, that part's like a little bit of a struggle anyway, so I don't know. Maybe it's not the best option. Do you want to be in the video? You can be in here if you want. Here you go. Hi. Hi. Okay, I finished pretty much all of my tagging, so I'm going to work on my square stuff and get back to you guys with um how i do some of that hello welcome back we are on square if you're not familiar with square it is a payment app that a lot of people use to take card payments at events and everything um I actually do all of my inventory tracking in here for my events. So not only do I track card payments in here, I track my cash payments as well. Um, there's an option when you go to check out with your items, you can hit cash payment instead of a card payment and it helps with my inventory tracking. So kind of over here, you'll see all of the stock that I have in these items. And then as they, as I sell them on here uh, at my event, I will know how many I have left. And because I don't always display all of my items, sometimes they're thrown in a bag somewhere. So it's just kind of helpful to know what I have, what I'm bringing. 
um, and then know for my next market what I have left after the event is over. So I tried to track everything in here. It doesn't always go as planned, but I do my best. So I'll just show you quickly how I do some of that. I have another sheet pulled up in a different tab with how many items I made and what I will be selling all those for. So I just want to make sure that that all lines up. I'm going to update my axolotl inventory uh, down here. You can add variations to your items. So I add a all my colors and I track how many of each specific color I have. I have a purple one that I am adding. And we're going to add some stock. So now I have one on hand as opposed to the zero that I had before. And I don't need to do any other updates in here, but you could easily just go in here and update the price if you wanted to do that. Um, SKUs, uh, I'm starting to get into SKUs. SKUs are like tracking codes that you can use for your items that just make it helpful to do like reporting and everything. If you have like things coming, for example, I also sell on Etsy and sometimes the way that I'm writing things down, the titles that I have on Etsy for my Etsy keywords are different than what I would regularly just call the item. So it's, it's kind of hard for like reporting purposes if you're trying to condense all of your reporting. Um, from different places. So SKUs can be really helpful with that. You can add your SKUs to the Square platform. You can add them to Etsy. So it's a simple code as opposed to like a messy name convention. So eventually I will be adding SKUs, but I do not have them ready for this upcoming market. Um, I recently just added a bunch of pictures to all my items and that's really helpful when you're looking for things on the app in the moment. So I really like doing that. And then you'll just hit save and now my inventory is updated. And now there's no little red mark. Usually a little red mark indicates that one of the items, one of the like colors or sizes of these items are sold out and then you'll see like a little red mark. So. For example, here by my cow, you'll see one variation is sold out. I still have one left, but one is sold out, but I actually will be adding to this inventory. So we'll do that. I already have some variations here and I'm adding a hot pink variation. We are receiving stock because I made a new one. You can add however many you are adding to your stock. And now I have one on hand here and don't forget to hit the save button. And then if you wanted to add additional colors, you could create an additional variation. For example, I do have a different color dragon this time. So I'm going to add an additional color variation. So I only have this in here. Now we're going to create a variation and uh, this is going to be my blue multicolor. Um, my price, I'm doing 27 for this one because it came out a little smaller with the Sweet Snuggles yarn that I used and we're good there. And then I'm going to manage the stock over here. We're going to turn the tracking on. You want to make sure your tracking is on, on all these items, on all these variations to track the stock. So you do have to hit that button. Um, we are receiving stock and we have one of these guys. Uh, I don't know if I should delete this because I'm not, I don't think I'm selling this guy. So I might just turn off the tracking for him for now because I'm keeping that one. Okay. We're hitting save. And that is done. Okay, now we have our chickens. We made a new chicken. Gonna add some to my stock. Manage the stock. Stock received. We are adding one. And we're done. And it's that easy. And I'm gonna go through and do add all my variations, all my colors, and all my stock. 
edit all of my prices if I need to. And yeah, that is pretty much it for Square. I hope this was helpful for you guys. This can be a very helpful app and this can be a very convenient way to help you stay organized. So I would definitely recommend, please let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions or concerns about Square. Um, I'm still kind of learning some nuances in here, so uh, I'm not a professional, but anything I can help you with, I would love to do so. So let me know. Okay, we have reached the end of our market prep video. It has literally taken me all day to do all this stuff. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, but thank you for hanging out with me. I like when we hang out while I do it. It definitely makes it a little less painless for me. And I, like I said, have my market coming up this weekend. So I will have a market breakdown video out next week. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. And wish me luck. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.